From its architecture to its natural environment, Savannah has long been a lure for artists of all varieties. And in the early decades of the 20th century, the city sought to nurture local artists while attracting prominent artists from other parts of the country. But it's not just the live oaks and the Spanish moss that served as inspiration for their works. Courtney McNeil, chief curator of the Telfair Museums, has more in this latest installment of Hungry for History, a monthly program sponsored by the city's municipal archives. So in addition to fostering the work of local artists here in Savannah, um, there were also uh, um, things afoot that helped bring in nationally known artists who then use their internationally renowned styles and, and award-winning approaches to art to depict the Savannah area. Um, so Elliot Clark is one of those who was brought in as a visiting artist by the Savannah Art Club. He came for the winter in both 1924 and 1925, and he took subjects like the bustling activity of the wharves industry on Hutchinson Island, and um, you know the the um, view of River Street, which was not nearly as popular and crowded at the time. It was kind of a barren industrial landscape at that time, and so he took these kind of off the beaten path subjects and um, and used those as as subjects for his work. In addition to the nationally known artists, Savannah artists like Christopher A.D. Murphy, Mark Sheridan, Augusta Olching, and self-taught artists William Golding and Anna Hunter were also featured at the Telfair during the decade spanning from 1920 to 1960. So today we really retain this, um, this dual commitment to both bring the best of world-class art to Savannah and to also recognize our important role here in the cultural fabric of our city. I'm uniquely positioned to tell the story of art in Savannah.